Hello guys and welcome back to uh, day two of our uh, feature tournament here. One nation of gamers putting on another uh, mix-up tournament. Uh, if you haven't caught the earlier games, if you haven't been on yesterday, uh, it is Bring Four Decks Conquest Get One Band, and it is a mix of invited players and qualified players. Risen is the fourth invited player of the list. And he's playing against VLPS. VLPS ended up winning the uh, open tournament uh, number three, I believe. And uh, both are uh, pretty experienced players. Uh, while VLPS did did qualify for the tournament through, um, you know, normal person me uh, means, uh, he has uh, had quite a bit of success uh, in the past uh, on his own right. So here we see a little bit of a different uh, selection of decks. We see that VLPS. I think is the only player in this entire tournament not playing Druid. And I think at the same time, he is the only player playing Priest. So that is a curious replacement. Um, yeah, some definitely. players would see that you know, <clears throat> losing the best and bringing the worst. Uh, what's your take on that? And I think VLPS is a player who really likes control decks, right? Every time I see him play like at BlizzCon, I've talked to him recently. I think he loves control decks and... Priest is another control deck, so he just, that's his thing. He wants to play Priest. We'll see how it works out. Maybe his lineup's like designed somewhat towards it, you know, where he can come up with a good strategy for it. So, Well, you can certainly play uh, Warlock in a control format. You can uh, absolutely play Warrior almost exclusively in a control format. Uh, Priest the same. But then we see that VLPS also brought Shaman. Um, now, when, when you're designing your lineup for a four-deck conquest, do you think there's maybe some weakness in having three control decks and then an aggro shaman thrown in? I don't, I don't know, actually. Uh, it, maybe if the aggro shaman if it was thrown in, some people like to target one deck, right? So by having a bunch of control decks and one aggro shaman, if someone tar makes an anti-aggro lineup, they can still beat you just because you'll never win with the shaman sometimes, right? Mm -hmm. So it does seem to maybe expose himself to that. But uh, you know, part of what they say is shaman, you can... Zero three anything or three of anything. So yeah, we've yeah. seen a little bit of that already in the tournament. Mm -hmm. On uh, on Risen side, he is also a bit adventurous. Um, he did bring some three very familiar classes, but also Rogue. Uh, I do believe he is also the only player of the tournament to bring Rogue. I'm not too sure of that, but I don't believe we saw any of any of uh, uh, Rogue played yesterday. I mean, saw yeah. Risen is known as a Rogue specialist, or at least mm -hmm. he's. He's always plays Rogue. I, I think he streams almost exclusively Rogue. Uh, yeah, it's just his favorite class. So you gotta you gotta go with the, your favorite class that he streams. Yeah, yeah. Experience counts for a lot in Rogue. I have seen Rogue decks do very well in tournaments. Um, I think it was like Super JJ Rogue with the Malagos and like the sprints and stuff. That seemed like it was very powerful. But um, I haven't seen much of it. Like it, it seems like the deck that you see very rarely, but. When you do see it, it seems pretty good, which kind of questions why it is so rare. Why, why do you think so few players end up bringing Rogue tournaments despite Rogue se seems like a pretty good class? Uh, it's definitely a playability and learning curve. Rogue is one of the hardest classes. Um, judging by people's, everyone's tournament results, there's not a lot of incentive for players that don't play Rogue to learn it because mm -hmm. it's a very hard class to learn to play at that level. And even if you do know to play it, do you know how to play it? It's not. It's still not like a better deck than anything else. It just becomes, you know, what maybe one of your comfort picks or gives you another option. But you know, even well played rogue is not necessarily stronger than you know whatever like secret paladin or warrior. So it's like it's it's hard. I don't know if it's worth it for some people. So mm -hmm. yeah. Well, we'll see. Uh, just by looking at the matchups and the ban here, it seems like VLPS might might be employing a, a similar a similar strategy to what Dog was doing yesterday. Dog brought a lot of these mid-range control decks, and he just banned Druid in, in every matchup. And, uh, I mean, he won quite decisively. Um, that would make sense if not for the, the Shaman, but yeah. maybe... maybe Shaman's kind not of... too good Druid either, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> so, kind of. I don't know, actually. It's mm. around... Can't, it can't be that good with all the ancient and war, uh, all the taunts and heals. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. we'll have to see. I wonder how Rogue plays into all of this as well. Like Rogue seems pretty good against Priest, but particularly bad against uh, against Warrior. Warrior and Shaman, I think. Mm -hmm. Well, that describes the Priest deck pretty well there. 
That's exactly that's like if you can describe the priest deck with four cards, that's like the essence of what you do. <laughs> <laughs> it's like that's your deck. So now we know all three cards. <laughs> Pretty much. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> As for the Paladin, though, um, I didn't quite catch the Mulligan. I think he's still in the Mulligan stage. He but, has a uh, Okay. So those those three cards could be anything. This could be a mid-range Paladin. Actually, it seems to indicate that it is. I actually think it's a Seeker Paladin. Oh, um, I don't know. The new Seeker Consecration Paladin? as well. well I've seen them use Ragnaros. Okay. Okay. All right. You got it. <laughs> it's hard to tell. All those cards are in a lot of the, a lot of Paladins. So. Mm-hmm. All right, so uh, let's let's think about this matchup here. We have we have the secret paladin, and then the secret paladin has a few very dangerous minions, while okay. the priest has a ton of board clear. I mean, we see Akni, we see Circle Heal, we see two wild pyros. We know there's double light bomb, and he's also got the entombs for when the big minions come down. I feel like this is the type of matchup where the the priest has every answer for everything. And the only thing that he has to do is just not run out of stuff. I, yeah, I think Priest is known as a counter to Secret Paladin. You can also win with uh, like just curving out with Northshire Cleric and you know Villains Chosen, Death Lords, things like that, where they they don't even get an early lead. Yeah, Priest is too good at making comebacks as well. Um, Priest might just be the counter to Secret Paladin if you can make one like one class, one general archetype. I kind of like. Um... Freeze Mage with Sheeps. I think that's an even harder counter. <laughs> yeah, I think you're probably right on that one. Freeze Mage with Sheeps. Mm. Bit of a tough play here from uh, from Risen. It, what direction do you want to be going in if you're the Secret Paladin? Because it feels like if you go face, you can just get horribly punished. But if you go for board, you might just you, be too slow and never come up with the face damage. I think you have to go uh, for board and hope that you get face damage in through, like, one uncontested big minion, you know, like a Mysterious Challenger with hard deal with uh, Ragnaros, something like that. I would definitely start to see Consecrate uh, and trade with the with the 3-5. The other play you could do is Blessing Kings and trade with the Alkanai, but uh, for some reason that doesn't feel that great. I don't know. Yeah. There's also He's Redemption play. How about that? Mm. He might still play Redemption here after the Consecrate. Okay. Hmm. Yeah, this is nice. 5-1. It's, it's a high damage minion, hard to deal with. And if Priest does choose to deal with it, which is not exactly easy, you have to do something like Pyromancer here, he still actually has a Redemption, so... I think, I think it's a it's really uh, really unfortunate to deal with this here. I think you pretty much can't unless you learn to Pyromancer flash kill yourself or something. But. Yeah, that's very weak. Yeah. The other problem, though, is that uh, you're really incentivized as the priest to have something on board before Mr. Challenger because you can't just simply light bomb Mr. Challenger because of redemption, right, in general. Uh, it's come back at <laughs> so like a 6 1. So. Wow, uh, Hegel. That's actually pretty good. Pagel is amazing, I think. Is it, it's not really going to die anytime soon. It also and dodges light bombs and everything like that. Yeah. Dodges the light bombs. Um, Mysterious Challenger is going to play right now. Is going to basically cure the deck of a lot of these terrible secret draws. And uh, Nat Pagel is going to start clocking in some, some real cards here pretty soon. Yeah, I think you need to trade too. Like I said, if you don't trade, you can get blown up by light bomb, right? But they can't proc your secrets before light bombing, so it just turns out nothing. Like say light bomb here, it's like Monsieur Chandra comes back as a six one Avenge procs on the on the Nat Pagel. It's like almost like you're taking more damage Welcome after the light bomb. So okay, he gets repentance here. And that is a little bit problematic, actually. Oh, my. Oh, I don't even know. That's a lot of stuff you can do. <laughs> well, you have to know that if you play Boom, you are kind you of... You play Paper as well. What, what about just playing Ragnaros, trading the 2-2, two, two, and going 6 and 8 face? That's, that's so much pressure. Probably what I do. Honestly, just play Ragnaros here. Um... 
You could also play something like... Eh, it's nothing really makes that much sense, right? Dr. Boom is okay in the rank. It's kind of also like Older Man and Creeper Hero Power, but I don't even know. Let me if you're not scared of Light Bomb, you might as well, right? I mean, you're not well, really scared of Light Bomb. If you're scared of Light Bomb, you can't really do much better anyway. Yeah, I mean, Light Bomb's just not that good here still. Light Bomb, you're still taking 10 damage, or 9 damage on board. Uh, and Boom is just as weak to Light Bomb anyway, so... Oh, there's no re redemption. Yeah, the redemption triggered on the Shredder. Oh, yeah, okay. It's not quite much. that much damage, but... I mean, the, the follow-ups are still pretty brutal. You still got a 3-6 Pagel, and... I mean, VLPS is basically playing nothing at this stage. Yeah. MVP Pagel, man. That was a ridiculous draw. Pagel still survives. After the second light bomb. Yep. Okay, so this could go really bad for Risen if the Avenge activates on the, that Pagel. Does, oh no, he's still not clear, never mind. <laughs> uh. Okay, that might not be the worst if you maybe go for the tomb. It's still like bomb. This is gonna be a lot of damage though. Yeah. It's gonna be double bomb and then he's got double kings with the pagel. He's almost dead. Double kings here is so crazy. As long as yeah, you don't double kings, just crazy. Same, but yeah. If if the bombs hit for more, he could have actually died there, I believe. Okay. I feel like as risen, you can't go all in on double kings this turn. You have no. to make some kind of compromise. I kinda like creeper muster kings. Well, you've seen two pyros and two life bombs, right? Like, what else is coming? Oh, and an Akanai, actually. So he's only got one Akanai for board clears in the whole deck. That's... yeah. Did there are the Holy Novas in this deck? Not if you have that much board clear already. You maybe Probably you'd have not, one. Yeah. yeah. He needs one of those cards. That's a good one, though. Harrison gives him a lot of draws for the second uh, Akanai. It's another Death Lord. He gets a Death. That's death a Lord. Bit... He pro I think he dies playing Death Lord. Olderman does brings it down to three life, and you have double keys. Well, there's there's nothing you, there's nothing you can do then. That's it then. Yeah, I think that might be it. Let's see, three double keys. Yeah, he's dead. One hundred percent dead. Oh, you can't double keys an older man. It takes four damage. <laughs> it takes four damage to kill a Death Lord. Oops. Yeah. So for some reason, he's actually double keys. No, he's at one. He's not dead. He's not dead. Nice. No, because there's not enough room on the board. Yeah. I think you still gotta go for kings. Um, I like the pressure of kings. Yeah, me too. And I actually like just going face with everything at this point. Yep. You got two yeah. creepers, so and a kings to, to follow. This is all. I mean, I think the new. only thing you're playing around is Alkani Circle, right? And leaving up this, uh, even leaving this guy up, Alkanai's circle doesn't clear everything, I think. Hmm. Yeah, this has to be over. Yeah, that's definitely for now. No, it's actually exactly for <laughs> It was pretty close again. It was pretty close again. For some reason, it looked like it was 100% lethal. It was a gigantic board. They're all 1-1s, one -one, so... Yeah. Well, the priest deck almost holds on, but not quite. Uh, Nat Pagel was definitely MVP there. Um, just having that board presence, even after an Avenge and a second Light Bomb. How many uh, cards was that Nat Pagel worth? I think it drew three. But it's it's yeah. not even that he drew three. Like, okay, three cards is a lot. <laughs> there's there's so few minions that would have survived in that situation, right? I mean, you yeah, basically yeah. needed to get an 0-4 minion or an 0-3 minion 
There's like three of those out of the 82 drops. Yeah, it was the perfect card to carry the light bombs with the Avenge going up into it later. Yeah. So pretty close. Because, I mean, I say it's close because I think when the Priest stabilizes, it's kind of over. Um, mm-hmm. So I, I think that was actually a fairly close game. And I think Pagel was kind of the tipping point. Yeah, I mean, even those three cards, like three cards, not that much. But those last like two Kings and Shredders were those three cards almost. Yeah. So it's like the even the card draw was huge. Uh, we said that that was pro- probably the best matchup for VLPS, right? Uh, Priest being the Karen of Paladin. So he just lost that, and now it's not looking good for him at all. Uh, no, it's not. Uh, it's also going to be heavily based on what type of Warlock deck um, Risen is playing. Because if he's playing like a Reno Lock, then I think the Priest has zero good matchups left. Yeah. Oh, R- Risen gets another kind of bad matchup for him. Uh, he did w- w- win the first one, though. This is Control Warrior against Rogue. Uh, I think very Control Warrior favored. Rogue generally needs to go through all 30 cards before Warrior goes through half their deck. Because if Warrior goes through the whole deck, you're never getting enough damage to kill them in fatigue. So, well, it's a stop a Warrior start. from card roll. This is a really good start for VLPS, I think. He has everything he needs. Rogue, rogue starts are kind of whatever, I think. Um, mm-hmm. Most are similar enough, I feel. Because even if you try to curve out, like, 3, 4, 5, it's generally not that good for Rogue. Like, sometimes you even want, want to save SIs for later. Oh, okay, so this is perfect. He's trying to save a coin there. Yeah. He's scared of the Acolyte. If you just play Shredder, uh, the Acolyte can kind of like farm the second half of the Shredder for cards. In, so. Yeah, in a lot of cases at least. Yeah, in a lot of cases. Alright, he's able to deal with it here with uh, spell damage backstab. Kills it in one shot, only one card drawn. And the Azure Drake is uh, uh, above the health requirement of the, of the opposing weapon here. Yeah. Is that a shield slam? Yeah. That's a shield slam. I, I definitely agree with that shield slam. I like that being the best play. I feel like if I was VLPS, I probably would have shield block shield slam. I think he probably knows better, anyways, in this matchup. Uh, he's just playing very slow, where right? he wants to armor up every turn. Yeah. And cycle shield block for later. <coughs> Also, with the way VLP is playing, it kind of leads me to think that his warrior list is very removal slash fatigue heavy. He's not trying to cycle for Dr. Boom and you know, those minions as much. You can prep a prep a backstab. <laughs> what, what do you think if, if preps stacked? So if <laughs> oh, preps geez. was like... If it was reduced, reduced your next mm-hmm. your next non preparation spell by three or something like that. So you can double prep sprint on turn one. Yeah, but that that would only net you one extra card, wouldn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Use three to draw four for one mana. It's worth. Really. That is worth it, but it technically I mean, it's worth it. But then your deck runs are kind of weird. I'm assuming you yeah. had other synergies with prep. Yeah, you design your deck around it, so I don't know. I guess it's not actually that much implications, because mm. most rogue spells are not more than 3 mana anyways. Oh look, it's the equivalent of a boar. Yeah. You know that card is dead next turn 100% of the time, you might as well attack with it. I would swing with it at this point if you play Shredder. The only point I wouldn't would swing is uh, if I don't play the Shredder and you kind of want to force up the weapon charge. But if you play Shredder, then of course you have to sleep. Well, there's the other Acolyte. As you mentioned, card draw is pretty important here. Oh, wow. He's not even willing to swing. Oh, he can execute, or he can slam. I think that's what he's thinking about now. He does go with the execute. He really wants like to maximize the draws. Yeah, exactly. And the armor ups, right? With X key, you get extra armor up, potentially. Um, kind of leads back to what I was talking about in the earlier, where Rogue Drone needs to kill the warrior before they draw 15, you draw 30 as Rogue. So just anytime you can cycle cards as a warrior, it's huge. You get to find your cheap removals and your... Mm-hmm. Like, I think that the warrior was actually ahead of draws over the Rogue. I think this sprint kind of equalizes that, but I think, I think 
They actually are about equalized. You, and that's not where you want to be at the road, so... Yeah. It's that three-card Acolyte that's huge. Three-card Acolyte is almost a spin. There's a three-card Acolyte, and there was just the one of Acolyte before. So he has drawn four extra. The LPS is playing very comfortable. Like, he's playing these turns extremely fast, too. It just shows how comfortable he is on this controller. I think it's his... Basically, it's like his uh, specialty, in a way. It's like, that's like his deck, so... BGH now for Van Cleef. Uh, that's not gonna work. Mm, I don't... I don't see a Van Cleef being played here anyway. Yeah. I think you probably just want a Belcher. Oh, next turn you kind of want to do Belcher Lothib though. So maybe you do want to kind of make a Van Cleef here. How would you do it? Be Weapon Up, then Poison? Oh, maybe Weapon Up, Poison, Van Cleef, and Blood Mage or something? I was I was thinking if you do Van Cleef, it could be Sludge, Belcher, Deadly Poison, Van Cleef. But that plays from BGH is 6-6. Six, six. The only problem is your Poison is, you know, not well, really doing that. You great. also get wrecked by the, the Weapon and the Execute. And yeah, you do. <coughs> I don't know. It's not gonna, nothing. Nothing is good here, right? Basically. Yeah, I think I think a six six Van Cleef with the Blood Mage is probably best. Or if you just play four four Van Cleef, okay, no Van Cleef. He's just gonna play some stuff and cycle the Blood Mage. Oh, I think I know now what Ryzen's doing. And this is actually smart, I didn't think about it until now, but I think he's trying to combo Van Cleef with Lothab and uh, using prep on those turns so that it's hard for him to execute it or or uh, or kill it that way, and I guess he's not going to... He's going to be sad when he runs in the big game runner, but you know, it's, it's what he's trying to do and I love it. So. Mm, yep. Oh boy. I'm definitely expecting to see that move. He is going to get pretty wrecked here, though. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's like one of the only ways you can win this matchup, right? Especially with the opening, where, you know, VLPS played so efficiently, drew three cards from Acolyte. At some point, you have to take big risks, and... Wow. I don't think he's actually doing it anymore, after playing Belcher. You can also do Belcher Lothab. And just leave up the board? Sure. Yeah. You trade pretty well into it. Yeah. I was gonna go with 6 6 Van Cleef. Look at that. It's kind of weird. If you were doing this play, why not play the Lothab here instead? Right? Mm -hmm. I don't know. There goes I feel like maybe he didn't, yeah, maybe it was, like, it was hard to make a call. Maybe he kind of made it in the middle of the turn as well, after playing Belcher. Uh, this, all this warrior stuff just cycles so efficient, right? All these one man removals, carrying five minutes, five mana minions. Uh, that's what, that's why control war is so strong. That's why like, this deck works. Uh, Harrison Jones as well. That's a huge tech card against Rogue. Allows you to get closer to those fifteen cards you need to win. <laughs> I think he's already at fifteen. But, yeah. But, I mean, what miracle is he going to need to win here? I don't know. Maybe if he's running Malagos. Malagos. Get some yeah. Malagos off the Death Lord. <laughs> That'd be crazy. No damage in hand, though, for Malagos. Well, if you get Malagos off the Death Lord, you're destined to top deck a sprint with Prepid Hand. <laughs> yeah, I agree. Uh oh, that's not a good card for Ryzen to see. No, there's, there's nothing good about Ryzen's situation right now. So it does just kind of go for just the car, I think. I mean, you have Brawl if the board gets bad. None of your moves really deal with Belcher anyways, I think. Hmm. I just don't think you really care if um, if Deathlord dies. You just want to armor up and just keep, keep on going. There's not yeah, really much I mean, to just... it. Yeah, exactly. There are no other great moves there. I like the just card there the most. Your death is gonna die, and you're gonna lose board control this turn probably. And but you have you have brawl, right? So 
Wow. Oh, no, no minions. minions left. That is not good for Ryzen. He knows that these minions have to win them the game. <laughs> so <laughs> his only minions is let them drink in this 3 3. <laughs> this is not going to happen. <laughs> no, it's not. All right, right now he's just going all out. Let's hope both brawls are in the bottom of the deck. That's the only way I'm winning. And then he's going to realize that's not exactly the case. So what, what are those cards left? And all spells of history, oil, and oh man. Well, I think it's rare that you'd ever see one of sprint in any deck, right? It's either it's either two or zero. So one of them is a sprint, which is really bad. Because uh, that's a card you just never play. Oh, it loses the brawl pretty badly, too. Yeah, these death ports don't even have downsides anymore. Well, he hasn't conceded yet, somehow, so, I don't know. Maybe the there's something to... we're not aware of. Yeah, the only, his only way to win is to um, buff up that 3-3 huge and keep it alive with Tinker Oil. Because getting 3 damage in every turn is not going to cut it against Tank Up, right? Even if that 3 3 isn't contested. And uh, that's pretty dubious at that point. That a word can't kill your 3 3. Hmm. You just go face with this, right? Wow. Uh, I think he targeted his own face. Shield block into a belcher into tank up. That, how much armor was that? Two. Nine. Nine and then seven health on the belcher. Yeah. Yeah. There's just no chance. Yeah, so the LPS just threw way too many cards. The Ryzen has to cycle through fast and you know get the LPS before that point, so that much of went as it's Warrior expected. grabs a win. Um, really, the wild cards of this matchup seems to be what type of shaman the LPS is bringing. Um, as I think there's there's actually some chance it's not face shaman. What if he's actually bringing Control Shaman yeah. with Elemental Destruction Law Burst or uh, something like that? I'd be extremely impressed. It might be alright against Zoo, but it's definitely terrible against Rogue, I think. <laughs> yeah, is it? If you have enough healing, maybe. With, uh, what's it called? The Healing Wave can heal you for 14. Do people yeah. actually play that card? I don't think they're they're able to. Okay, I don't, I don't know then. I was thinking of a deck that ran like you know, all those heals and control cards that... Mm. Well, the closest we've seen to Control Shaman in recent times are decks that abuse um, the Inspire mechanics, and particularly um, Thunder Bluff Valiant. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, and that style of Control Shaman, I feel, does lose to Rogue quite yeah. decisively. Yeah, I th I feel like that's more of like the mid range control shaman. Mm -hmm. I thought well, you were talking about the uh, the real <laughs> the real control shaman. What are you talking about? This is some 2013 we're talking here. Yeah. Mm, okay. It well, is aggro shaman though. Okay, like we expected, kind of. Yeah. Aggro shaman, I think, is extremely favored against rogue. Just because Rogue can't stop that doing ever damage. It comes too fast. There's no, there's no taunts, no heals. You got the races, Rogue. Rogue is going to race that right now. <laughs> so that into Flame Juggler and a lot of damage potentially. Wow. Just lightning bolt to the face. Yep. Get that mana efficiency. I guess that's better than Flame Juggler. It's more damage. Well, I like it because Risen can't do one and three damage. Like, if he does one, he basically has to play the SI without a combo. If he does three, he's kind of passing his turn unless he's willing to Blade Flurry two minions, which I don't believe he is. It's hard to make that call to Blade Flurry two minions. Uh, but it's also so hard to do another move. I think what he's going to do is a Deadly Poison Eviscery. Uh, uh, that seems so bad too. Everything seems bad here. If you do the blade flurry play, you kind of have no play next turn as well, though. Yeah, I guess he went for the 
that the Poison Eviscerate play. I do expect him to attack here into the 2-1 instead of setting up for Blade Flurry because he probably just wants to play a sign next turn. It's getting hot in here. Yeah, right. and now that's like totally in the Shaman's favor with, with the dynamic of the game, how it went, because... Uh, yeah, you're just like bashing all the minions, right? You're taking too much damage. Mm -hmm. Dune here is going to send a 14 here with Crackle and Lightning Bolt. It's just not looking good. There's a Blade for SI next turn for some yep. comeback mechanics. Risen just has to win so quickly. And I mean, we've, we've basically seen as a whole deck, there's no taunts, there's no heals. The amount of life you have, that's it. Some of these rogue decks run like a one of heal bot, but we, we know that's not the case because we didn't see it and we saw Deathlord pull zero minions. Yeah, I guess uh, SI would... Uh, SI would... Edwin and Cleef would be better here than us, I think. Well, he's got to race him with this, and um, that's going to be a bit tough, I think. <laughs> oh, it's, I mean he's dead. That's, he's that's what I meant. Dead. Probably dead. One out of four, he lives. Uh, nope. Max roll crackle. This is why you can win after after Reno, too, as Chalmers. This is so much damage. I think Doom Hammer's a bit busted. Well, Shamans are getting uh, at least one other pretty pretty great weapon uh, alongside it. It seems to be a, a bit more of a controlling weapon, though. I think it's the, the Twilight Hammer. I'm not, not too sure exactly. I don't actually like that card very much. Oh, I love it. I think it's uh, awesome. It's 5 mana for a 4-2 weapon. That gives you a 4-2. Yeah. 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 I think it just doesn't kill enough at 5, but at 5 mana. Hmm. I just like the aspect of uh, popping down a high attack minion on the second hit of a weapon, because that's when you have the maximum tempo swing from a weapon. Mm, that's interesting, yeah. Rogue vs. Priest, not a good matchup. This this is like the story of this series, right? It's never these close games. It's At least all deck one. Time, like, right. All is, yeah. That's what happens when you bring... Uh, I mean, that's why we call it standard decks to tier 1 decks, right? We both said that the LPS and, and Ryzen brought some off decks like Rogue and Priest. You know, they're the only ones that brought these decks. And these decks are more to turn, generally more polarized, right? They have uh, strong matchups and weak matchups. Alright, well. Threatens enough damage on the Death Lord, but it's not quite going to do it here. Probably gonna be healed up with Northshire Cleric, and the oh wow, that's huge. Yeah, you, you can play Northshire, Power Word Shield, and then a circle. Oh, he's going for the super yeah, draw. Wow. Oh, that's so good because he also gets to kill the three two before yep. circling. That's exactly right. Oh, I guess it's the same either way. Oh, yeah, this gives him one more card. Cause it'll make another explosion. Oh, okay. Wow. <laughs> okay, wait, do you do it? Yeah, why not? <laughs> why not? That's exactly that, that's... right. You get why not? the nine here. Mm -hmm. Perfect amount of cards. Oh, Ryzen's not happy. He's, uh, he's, you know, normally when you go into the matchup, you're like, okay, kind of free win. Kind of free. I'm, I'm, I'm looking good. I'm a rogue. Against Priest, then this happens and you're like... Priest has drawn seven cards over the Rogue on turn oh, four. Yeah. Which, which means on four. average, the, the Priest has drawn one three cards every turn. <laughs> and he has the board, not, not to mention he's ahead on board <laughs> while doing that, so... Uh, I, I, okay, I don't know then. Ryzen's going to have a hard one this time. He's. I, need, I think he needs to set up for... I was going to say some kind of AoE, but that's not looking good already to do that. Hmm. No, I think he's he's actually kind of screwed. I think it's actually pretty. pretty I think I, what I'd do probably here is a uh, bad teacher coin sap and here power. Mm. Can't coin sap. Oh yeah. Oops. <laughs> I seem to have that problem a lot today. Uh. All right. Well, I guess coin as your Drake is a play. I suppose. Interesting if shields that one. I thought he was going to uh, trade the three. 
Oh, okay, that makes sense. Because he needed to shield it, right? Or it would die. I just wonder what he's going to play here. There are. I feel like you're just. I feel like you just stopped drawing, right? There's no way you want to draw more. Stop drawing. (laughs) Just play at least and trade your power master. Oh, jeez. I I don't. I I personally don't think I'd stop drawing. Well, you can play the um, the zombie chow, and you have the Akanai behind. That puts some pressure on the board. Um, so maybe you can. Four mana. Oh, you mean later? The yeah, okay, next turn. Don't really like the Valens here. Oh. Yeah, he took extra damage, right? Yeah, he took extra damage on his minions there. Yeah. He could have traded the Pyro before playing the Valens. Yeah, I think it's too fancy. I just... There's no reason to play Valens there. I think when you could just play a. Oh, I think Valens is good. I think that play was good, but I. He just took extra damage on his minions, and that seems yeah. to be a bit significant right now. Because I feel like Velens is more of a flex card, or at least is like a slow minion, so you can always Velens later and get that you know immediate trade power in. But like generally, you'd rather Blessing Kings the trade than to just play it compared to like a Shredder and Four if you're bad. Eh, who knows? Well, I think you have to heal the North Shard to draw, and then play the Akanai and trade the, uh, the Zombie Chow, and hit it with the North Shard, right? Oh, that's a very good play, yeah, because your North Shard's alive still. Yep. Damage definitely matters, changing that uh, plus 5 to negative 5. That's a 10-point swing. Oh... Do you think this is a misplay compared to what you're saying as well? Uh, maybe not, but it doesn't guarantee value off the zombie chow now. And yeah, the, and you're leaving the, up a the 2 rogue's three health is one. finite. Mm-hmm. It seems like I like your play a lot better. Your lo- your board's similar strength to you have a 3 1 uh, North Shire instead of a 2 3, but you're just guaranteeing that damage, whereas this way, mm. you're not really guaranteeing it. If you can do a full, like, 5 health. Blade Flurry, it actually kills, they actually heal if they die at the same time. Okay. Well, he goes for the sap. If he double sapped, he would have milled one. <laughs> Not that it actually matters, though. <laughs> well, that's how, that's how the pre stack works. You you draw your entire deck and then you fill it back up. Technically, Rogue can still win. Yeah, it is going to be very difficult though. You're so low on HP right now. Yeah, basically keep in mind that it's that the key thing here is that Blade Flurry. I think with the Tinker Royal. Problem is that Chow is. <laughs> uh, uh, but this is almost good for Horizon in some ways. I just feel like he needs to. The LPS just not, you know, respecting the the, the Chow. It's gonna die and heal. It's so much different than getting that that five damage. Yeah, that's a ten swing. Yeah. I don't know. I, I actually think the LPS definitely should have tried to trade in Zombie Chow at some point. He just kept on doing everything. Yeah, and never, yeah, and never trading that Chow. In. This is gonna be a mill, by the way. Oh, okay. That's 10 cards. And flash heal. Wow, that's a pretty big one. Wow, that's a very good one, because it's a high tempo card with, yeah. with Soul Priest. Had he burned a few more cards and did the Zombie Chow Death Rattle as damage, that flash heal would have been lethal, I think. Mm-hmm. And now you're stuck playing a lot of minions, and you can always get played for you. I don't know, it's not actually over for Rogue. It's going to be very hard, though, especially with those two in Tombs for value, Belcher and... Uh, and uh, what do you what do you think about the the pray for a prep draw play, prep sprint into hope to get another prep for your oil into blade flurry? Because <laughs> if, uh, if you do that, you actually have a chance, right? If you prep sprint, you have six six mana, so you you can't play the oil flurry. It costs uh, yeah. Yeah, you'd have to. That's that's what I mean. It's yeah. It's like the top deck a uh, prep hero play. Yeah, I guess he doesn't think it's necessary. 
It's just gonna play flurry, trade the one one in. Save the prep. Is there a minion left? Wow. There's a, it's it's a minion good one. Left. Yep. There's a lot of board clear though, but those are pretty light bomb resistant, so it's, I think that's the best minion he could have gotten, considering light bomb resistance is very important. Oh, there is a so There's there. actually one, yeah. Okay, not great though. Uh, I don't like that kind of. <coughs> I think he should not have put light bomb. I think he should have just played two minions here and saved the light bomb because light bombs go with, or, or the holy nose good with pyromancer as well, and you can get that damage in anyways. Like this sets up better trades for the belcher, but it's a rogue, mostly not going to be traded anyways. And I don't know. I prefer to see more minions down and save the holy nova. He has so many minions, basically. Well. It can be a flood of one ones, but those are going to be very short lived. So many. Options. Yeah, <laughs> very short lived. With this hand, you could just do a very simple play with the backstab deadly poison here. I think that's what he's going to do. He might even trade in this three three instead of deadly poison. Uh, not sure, because it has light bomb anyways. So. Mm -hmm. It saves him a little bit of health. It's yeah. Good. I think that's kind of a misplay too. I think it could have just taken an extra damage on the Belcher. Like, why yeah, would that I matter? Agree with that. Uh, exactly, I agree with that too. Looks like Ryzen might just run out of value, right? Like he, it's kind of like what happened against War. You just run out of cards in your deck at some point. Mm -hmm. Just priests keep you up so well with all the card draw early. I am ready to learn. Well, this is still pretty good, though. He gets a prep. Wow. Oh, he gets a cleave. Now we're talking. <laughs> but there's another light bomb. But he hasn't played Lothab. Okay, well, I guess it's just gonna be a small little cleave. <laughs> the minivan cleave. Well, light bomb's quite good here. I think light bomb's definitely coming. He can uh, light bomb his acolyte, but that's a little bit greedy. The LPS might be running a little bit low on cards himself, even. I kind of would. Hmm. Want well, to see him just throw down some stuff at some point in the LPS. He's holding on to a lot of cards. Maybe he's trying to conserve uh, cards for at least the monkey, like turning his cleric into things like that. I don't know why it would matter that much in this matchup, but maybe the 1 3 doesn't matter much either, so. Alright, well, he goes face there. That means that one of his last three cards is oil. Wow. So I never do that. The LPS might lose. He doesn't have any reactive cards. If this is his best play, uh, Duskar's just going to die and. I can definitely see him losing. Would oil be lethal? Pretty, the LPS actually looks pretty uh, demoralized, like down too. You saw the shake of his head. Um, I don't know. I, I I feel like he had enough life. I feel like he should have played Acolyte on his life long term because his hand was so like bad. This hand. Well, he doesn't have much else good stuff. Like he's kind of played all his board yeah. clears. I mean, he's he's done with two. Uh, circle heals, he's done with two light bombs, he even played a holy nova. His only last board clear is going to be a, a chain of spells in the last oh, pyro. Yeah, he milled his flash shield right with Alcanize, it's hard to go for lethal now. Uh, it's hard for... Oh, at least Alcanize will do four with the hero power. What if VLPS just starts going all in with Alcanize uh, 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 hero power? That's still only eight damage though, so... Oh, that's... Oh, that's... Oh, oh there is no hurts. second oil. He can't survive though. All can I hear power twice to eight damage plus fatigue is lethal, but the LPS needs to survive two turns for that, so he needs to board clear first. Yeah. Can he get it? Does he even have one? Death Lord. Oh. I don't know if that's enough. Death Lord, all can I hear power the 4 4? 
See, I feel like he needed to play these clerics and stuff. It's just he's been holding, holding them almost for no reason. Uh, and I really don't like that Holy Nova move. Like, that was part of his combo with, with uh, Pyro, and he could have just played two minions on that turn. Holy Nova almost achieved nothing, cleared out two 1 1s. So, I don't know. I think there's a lot of. I think he got a little bit complacent after drawing 20 cards early. Mm -hmm. Well, he's capable of just healing himself, dropping a Death Lord and a bunch of minions. I think you never heal yourself because you're saving just as much damage, but Alkanaiing the 4 4 than healing yourself. You're right. Yeah. So it has to be Death Lord, Akanai, kill the 4 4 then. Yeah, and play. you might as well play the Gorshire at this point, right? Yeah. Well, he might rope out, and that'd be bad. Oh, he well, just wants to play the maximum thing. number of minions here. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I don't think that's lethal. I think he's like one or two off. Let's see. He has eight on the Death Lord, so he's three. Eviscerate, Eviscerate is... does six. So six face is more okay. efficient, by the way. Yeah, so six face. So three six plus three plus three. three. Hmm. Now he's got 12 damage max. Yeah. And he's going to die very quickly if he plays Blood Mage. Oh, yeah, that's true. When Blood Mage dies. His best play might just be to clear the board and try to keep all his minions alive. I think he has to do something like that. So you would still trade, what, the 4-4 the for 4 and four, the 2 eights, And yep. maybe... What do you think? Do you think uh, Deadly Poison, the 1 3 trade, your 3 3 for the 3 2 or something? Or nope. do you think just. I think you can just eviscerate the 3 2. Okay, eviscerate it. Deadly Poison. I think he's trade the 3 3 into the 1 3 and Deadly. Wait, oh, he eviscerate face! Oh, all in! Wait. Doesn't he die? Oh, he's dead! Oh, he's just dead to fatigue. He's dead, isn't he? he's dead to. Oh, the fatigue. Oh my god, that was weird. Embrace the void. That was really weird. Yeah, he took the three face damage. He can he can ping the uh, the blood mage too. Blood mage still die right? Yeah. Yeah. He, 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 two and two three. And three. <laughs> wow, very strange game there. Yeah. But uh, that ends up with uh, with the priest taking the win, which means uh, VLPS uh, has got the match. That's three. <laughs> so uh, VLPS will move on to the winners' uh, winners' match. He'll be playing against um, against Zelle, and Risen will be playing the losers' match against uh, Muzzy. Quite a curious match there. Uh, I am pretty excited to see VLPS bring these control decks, and uh, like well, control yeah, it should be pretty interesting to see him uh, off against uh, Zelle, where Zelle is playing, I think, more refined, aggressive decks than uh, than Risen was. So we'll get to see if VLPS strategy actually uh, is going to work in a more open environment. Um, we will have the winners match before the losers, so we are going to see Zelle versus VLPX uh, right after a few minute break while we while we set up. And while we break, if you guys want to take a moment uh, to check out geico.onog.gg, you guys can see what's going on with all these open tournaments. Um, Onog runs quite a few of them, and it's pretty easy to sign up. I uh, do encourage you guys to do so. It's very nice to see what the tournament experience is like. Maybe it is the activity for you. So check it out, sign up, see what's going on with uh, with the full schedule. And uh, while you're there, you can sign up to win a, uh, a 6 cyberpower PC. So make sure to check it all out, and we'll be back in a few minutes. <laughs> 